guys, gals, and non-binary pals, we got a new dungeon out here in D2, and you know what that means. Oh yeah, it's farm time. Today, we'll go ahead and talk about which dungeon encounters you should be farming for which loot, what strategy to use for a potential boss one phase, you know, the whole nine yards. But real quick, boys, tis the season to deck the halls and shave them balls with the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Manscaped. Christmas came a little early this year, fellas, because I just got gifted the new performance package by Manscaped. As you know, Manscaped created the world's first all-in-one men's grooming kit that got you covered from head to toe. The Lawnmower 4.0 remains the best cordless trimmer around, made with skin-safe technology to help reduce nicks and cuts on your precious cargo. Waterproof too, so tidy up in the shower if you want. And here's something you can stuff in your stocking, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Your jingle balls have never been so holiday fresh. And new to the collection, the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. It's got those 360 rotary blades and the same skin safe tech, so it helps prevent tugging and tears in your nose and ears. In addition to products for your face, they've got you even more covered head to toe with their new and improved Cheers 2.0 Luxury Six Piece Stainless Steel Nail Kit. The gift of freshness is always appreciated during the holidays, and for a limited time, you'll get two free gifts the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti Chafing Boxer Briefs. Don't wait. Go to manscaped.com slash falloutplace to get 20% off free international shipping and two free gifts. Thank you, Manscaped. All right, back to the content. Now, which encounter you should farm exactly depends on what loot you're looking to get out of the dungeon. Thankfully, we have a great graphic here, courtesy of blueberries.gg, a website I've shouted out before and will likely shout out again. You've got three major encounters in the new dungeon and each of them can be farmed repeatedly. Yeah, you heard that correctly. You won't be able to get repeated pinnacle drops for doing Spire of the Watcher over and over, but you will get loot drops from each major encounter every single time. And if you're thinking, well, I'll probably only get drops of what I've already unlocked in the dungeon loot pool, I won't be able to farm for new stuff, sad face. Actually, no, according to many people out there in the community, you can literally keep running any dungeon encounter over and over and your odds of getting any drop, including stuff you haven't gotten before, will remain the same. Meaning, for example, if you were looking to get the long arm legendary scout rifle, you could just keep running running the Ascend the Spire encounter over and over until you get the scout rifle. The only exception to that rule, though, is the new exotic bow. Apparently, you only have three shots per week at getting that to drop your first clear on each character. Yeah, best of luck on that, by the way. I still kill Oryx three times per week every mother week, and I still don't have touch of malice. Anyway, if you're looking to get either the scout machine gun, legendary auto rifle, or any of the three armor pieces seen here in the Blueberries infographic, Ascend the Spire is by far the most laid back dungeon farm option out there. There is no final boss. It's just a very repeatable, albeit kind of boring encounter for you and your fire team to farm. Actually, because there is no boss, you could potentially farm it in a fire team of two or alone if you wanted. By the way, hot tip, if anyone on your dungeon farm team is a warlock, go ahead and have them hop onto Shadebinder. When you have the Arctrician buff, aka the one you need to shoot and power up the wire connectors, apparently if you just pop your Shadebinder super and spam the secondary attack button, you will auto damage every wire connector near you and automatically just turn them on. Now that's what I call easy farming. If you're interested in the brand new grenade launcher, which oddly enough shoots out two grenades with one pull of the trigger, weird, or the brand new sidearm, which I hear is a banger, you will need to farm the boss encounter. Same thing if you're just looking for a general high stat armor farm, as the boss encounter can drop any piece of armor. The only problem is that Percy's, or however you pronounce its name, is an annoyingly beefy boss with a ton of health. Also, also, the entire boss room is filled with supplicants who can F up your run or at least delay your farming. That would be the bad news. The good news is that Percy's is both two-phaseable and believe it or not, one-phaseable. If you can't pull off the one phase right now, right away, don't worry about it. As we get further into season 19, your power level will go up and you'll unlock more of the artifact and you'll be shoving that long-legged chicken robot into a locker in no time. Take a look at the following clip. This is Cap and their fire team nuking Percy's with rocket launchers, which is 100% the play right now. Shout out to Cap who gave me the go ahead to go ahead and share this clip with all of you. As I kind of figured, in order to lock up that one phase, you need to pile on a ton of buffs and as always, one debuff. Here's the notes I gathered from both watching the clip and then speaking with Cap on Discord later about their team's loadout. They locked up a one phase with one Radiant Warlock Well and two Arc Titans. You might be able to also achieve a one phase with one Arc Titan and one Arc Hunter or Arc Warlock, but as we all know, Arc Titans have the ability to Thunder Crash at the last 
second for a ton of damage, whereas warlocks and hunters can't. Go ahead and take a look at these notes I jotted down, and by all means, feel free to take a screenshot or write down whatever you need to. The Radiant Warlock brings the Gallarhorn, which even though nerfed, is still goaded for the ability to power up other legendary rocket launchers. As you'll notice here, there's no divinity involved in this farm. If you remember from my artifact mod video I put out last week, the new artifact mod Weakened Clear is insane. It achieves the same debuff factor as post nerf divinity, and all you need to do is damage a boss one time with any grenade launcher in order to activate it. Feel free to let the warlock bring the grenade launcher and provide the debuff on the boss before swapping to damage with Gallarhorn. It'll also help if your solar warlock has both Starfire Protocol and Touch of Flame. That way, in between rocket shots, you can also yeet in a double explosion fusion grenade for more damage. Meanwhile, the Arc Guardians should be equipped with any hard hitting Arc rocket launcher. Naturally, the go to choice is going to be the almighty Hothead, preferably with Clown Cartridge. The reason you want it to be Arc is because you want your rocket launcher element to match your class element so you can take advantage of Font of Might, which remember, stacks with empowering buffs like a Warlock Radiant Well. Right before DPS phase, you want to find one of the Minotaurs in the main room and finish it paired together with Overcharge Wellmaker. That'll spawn Arc Elemental Wells and activate Font of Might's extra damage. Cap's team also had the very interesting choice of having one person on the team run the Lumina Hand Cannon. Lumina's extra damage buff doesn't stack with Warlock Radiant Well, it's actually more powerful. Remember from our good friend Quartz Damage Stacking document, Lumina gives a 35% damage buff while Warlock Radiant Well only gives 25. Why even bring the Radiant Well if you have a Lumina? Well, the Lumina damage buff is only temporary, so the TLDR is you'll ride that 35% damage buff for a few seconds before it goes away, and then you'll fall back to that cushy Radiant Well buff of 25%. Oh, another note, because the Warlock is running Weakened Clear, that allows the Arc Titans or Arc whoever on your team to run Monochromatic Maestro. Again, if you remember from my Artifact Mod video, Monochromatic Maestro lets you power up your weapons of the same element type as your abilities by about 10%. So when damage phase begins, your Arc Titan or Arc whoever, chuck an Arc Grenade at the boss and bam, you've just triggered Maestro and now your rocket launchers have an extra 10% more damage. Rocket the boss until you've got nothing left and then close out the damage phase with any Arc Titans plowing that big chicken with a falling star thunder crash. And by the way, if you don't have the gear or you're missing vital armor mods in order to pull off the strategy, eh, no big deal, just go for a two phase. If I hear of a better one phase farm in the future, I'll be sure to let you know, but the TLDR for right now is weakened clear, plus G-Horn, plus two arc rocket launchers, plus many, many buffs. By the way, let me know your dungeon thoughts down in the comment section. I've been thinking about making a video on my thoughts. Go ahead and give me the high sign if you want me to make that video. The high sign is clicking the like button, by the way, which is free to do, and thanks to those who do. Thank you very much for watching, happy farming, and I'll see you on stream.